What's up guys, it's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be talking about why this route didn't work, okay? So we're going to be looking at this comeback route, we're looking at two of the same exact routes from Devontae Smith here, so we're going to talk about why the first one, why he got jammed, why he got forced to the sideline, and why he ultimately didn't make this play, and it starts with being off the line, and then we're going to be talking about how he was able to create some separation and run a perfect comeback. So I hope this gives you guys some value on kind of the do's and don'ts of running comebacks, and that's what we're going to be mainly focusing on today, okay? But also, fellas, today on my website only, we are having a 50% off in Prove your route running in 10 days training program sales. So what it is, it's a 10 day step-by-step -step schedule. You can use it for longer than 10 days. You have access to it for life as soon as you sign up for it, but it's 50% off all the specific drills and techniques bundled together into a plan, a specific set of drills plan for you to improve your route running. So check out that very first link in the description. It's 50% off today, only on my website. Hope we get you guys on that soon. Let's get started. So this first route here from Smith is going to be this comeback route. And obviously you see this DBs all over him, right? So let's talk about what we could have done a little bit better here because the stem of the route isn't bad. He's selling vertical. He has a sudden drop at the top of the break, but this obviously did not work. DB is all over this thing. So we're going to talk about a little bit top of the route here, how we could have maybe gotten out of this a little bit better, a little bit smoother, but it starts off the line, right? So now if I got a DB lined up, who's like this and I'm off the ball, right? How much space do I got? I got a little bit of space, got maybe like a yard or two. So we got to utilize that space, especially Smith's a tall dude. But again, like the main critique is that he's light, right? So he's not going to be the guy who's going to, the, the, the big critique is, oh, can he get off? press can he get off press at the next level are they gonna these dbs are physical right you guys got to understand that this range right here you guys have plenty of space to work if you do the right things right so now this db isn't the biggest dude but he's a physical guy right he wants to get hands he wants to jam us off the line he wants to force us to the sideline okay that's his responsibility especially when he's in man coverage so when i come off the line and i give a jab to the inside but i don't really go nowhere and i don't step outside of his frame that's not going to threaten this guy right because you look when smith steps with this first step but he does this on the second clip and that's why it's so great to look at both of these. He takes just this little baby step right there. That's not threatening anybody. You know what I mean? That was just kind of wasted motion right there. This DB opened up, took the inside. But maybe if I come off the line, you got some range to work. Maybe I hit him with a split release and I give a little head fake to the inside. Or maybe I hit him with a one-two and I actually step outside of his frame and I actually threaten him in this direction to move him off. Because if I don't move him off and I just try to run, he's going to be able to get hands and continuously force me towards the sideline. Especially if you're a smaller guy. Especially if you're not the biggest guy in the world you got to be able to make something happen in this range. This is plenty of space, right? Because you see this DB shoots a hand. He cannot touch us, right? So what if I go here and I swat this hand? Maybe I give him a fake to the inside. I get him to overcommit, and then I got this outside release, right? So we got to understand that this should be an easy money play for us, right? This should be easy when we are off the ball. This DB wants to walk down and press. He's not going to be able to touch me if he keeps his base, right? The only way he's able to get hands is if he goes towards me, right? And if he goes towards me, he loses his base. This is a perfect example of that range that you guys got to work. So maybe I work like a little bit. I like the split release right here, but we could come off. We could do this little pop, like this little power step. And I hit him with a double up. I actually step outside of his frame. I actually threaten this guy to move. But if I don't step outside of his frame and I don't threaten him to move, I'm not going to be able to get any space and he's going to be all over me. And this is good coverage from this DB, right? These DBs are going to be talented. And you see how he's getting hands. Now, top of the break, there's no indicator into this drop. Okay. Maybe Smith's a little bit faster than this. Don't actually exactly know um, how, how fast he was at this time, how fast he been running the routes before so maybe his speed changed right and when your speed's changing when you're preparing for a break db's going to be able to be all over that but i don't think that's the case because of how much steps he took at the top of the break he takes about four to five steps so he snaps on the inside leg which is good second step third step fourth right here then he takes a fifth and then he's off balance and this db's all over him right this is a much easier play for him we're going to take a look at that at the next one too this next clip he's able to get out of the break and least amount of steps he's able to have that db trailing and actually self fade because of what he does off the line of scrimmage. So it starts off the line. So why this route didn't work is just because we didn't do what we needed to off the line of scrimmage. If I can actually move that DB and I can just threaten him to the inside, I'm going to be able to get some space. Let's rewind this thing before we watch it full speed. Let's cover it. He's inside shade a little bit, right? So what's one thing he doesn't want to give up? He doesn't want to give up the inside. So let's threaten him to the inside. Let's actually step outside of his frame. Let's not step outside of my frame to where I reach and I lean back, but let's actually step and bring your body and threaten him to the inside. If I can't threaten him to the inside, how do I expect him to move? If I step inside of his frame, he's just going to stay square. He's going to watch my hips and he's going to be all over this route just like what he was. So let's watch it again full speed one more time. So yeah, just got to give something off the line of scrimmage. Can't just rely on my speed to beat this guy. These techniques, when these DBs are technically sound, which they will be at the next level and they're going to be fast, you got to bring something to the table, right? And Smith is a great route runner. I'm just saying that for all of you guys who are at the high school level who maybe think that you could just get away with being fast, right? You'll look at a guy like Smith, not the biggest guy in the world, but 
But Dammy probably runs the best routes in this draft class, right? And that's why he's able to get open. That's why he's able to see success, even when he's not the, you know, like he's tall, but he's not the biggest guy in the world. You know what I mean? He's not, he doesn't weigh the most, right? So that's how you're able to create space and separate yourself when you're playing with some of the best athletes, you know, straight up in the country, right? So now when we're looking at this clip, we got a little bit more space to work, right? We got maybe about like three yards in this case, right? But it's still the same principle because he's inside shade. He's kind of in a catch technique. So what a lot of people will fall into right here is they'll just try to take off and run to the outside, kind of like what we did in the last clip. And that DB is going to get hands and force you all the way to the sideline. But watch what he does here. He attacks his leverage and actually threatens him to the outside, gets him to sit, and then bam, we're off this break. And you see what a sudden drop can do to you when that DB doesn't have hands, that DB didn't play this thing well, and he's not stride for stride with you. And we eliminate time at the top of the break. So let's talk about this. So this DB's inside shade and he's in this catch technique. Why wouldn't I just run straight off this? Because he's just going to run with you, get hands, force you to the sideline and the quarterback has like less than a yard to be able to put this thing on the money and make this throw. So I got to attack his leverage. I got to square him up and I got to try to move him off this block. If I can move him off that platform a little bit or threaten him to the inside, I created more space to the outside for myself. So Smith does a good job of that. He gives this little squirt release and what a squirt release is where you attack him. You see how he's kind of stepping a little bit more to the inside, committing his body, we get this DB to just sit. If I could just get him to hesitate a little bit and try to move off this platform and I got speed right here, I could actually win to the outside. I could actually pump my arms and go. Maybe not the best release you could have seen here from him, but if you would have maybe attacked him and threw a little bit more, but again, he's got to get up into this route. It's a longer developing route. We can't take too much time. That's another thing that you guys have to understand. That's why it's important to have a lot of different tools in your arsenal and like five or six releases that you already have pre-planned -pre going into a game that you, okay, he's out in this. I got this play. I could roll with this. You know what I mean? That's how you prepare for these kind of situations so you don't take too long, right? Because in the last clip, the really easy thing to say would be, oh, why didn't he just do a slide release and do all this fancy stuff? Because it wouldn't time up. Yeah, it would work, but the quarterback's going to be sitting back there and he's going to get sacked. So you guys got to understand the timing of the play, right? So this is a perfect release for this situation. Attack is leverage, give him move to the inside, actually sell with my upper half. If I could just get him to hesitate, I should win this route because Smith does such a great job of selling vertical. Obviously, he's got some speed. There is no indicators here at this pad level. He's able to stay in stride and just drop right now and be violent with those hips and snap down. That sudden drop, when I get this DB to overcommit, when he knows he got beat, when he felt you to the inside and he moves you to the inside and then you break outside, he's got to really overcommit. He gets on that horse and he's like, shit, I got to go. I don't, I don't want to get beat on a fade like this because you got to make it look like a fade. Maybe I've done that same release on a fade route before. Maybe I've got him. Maybe I'm backside on a play and my job's just to run him out. So I want to set up these routes. I want to set up these releases. I want to set up my stem. I want to make it look the exact same like I'm running a nine and then I'm able to drop this thing off right now. And you see how fast he's able to get out of it. Just one, two, three, four. He's out of the break right now. DB doesn't have enough time to react simply because he can't react off of us when running full speed, when I know when I'm breaking and he doesn't know when I'm breaking. Not saying that DB came out of this break bad, but if I can make that DB believe vertical and I do everything right, that DB shouldn't win. It's about what we do wrong, not necessarily what the DB does right. And that's a great job by Smith accelerating off that break, finding that ball and coming back to it. So there's a, there's a polar there's a 180 degree turn from the last rep that we saw right where we just give nothing release let this guy get hands force me to the sideline now i actually attacked him i squared up his midline i moved him off that line gave a jab got him to sit to the inside then i push vertical and then i get him trailing and really over committing and get him into that oh shit mode okay let's watch the thing again full speed great job by smith attacking him giving him that move pushing up vertical and then dropping this thing down great route by him all right guys i really want to thank you for watching i really appreciate it. if you guys have any questions at all please feel free to leave those in the comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And again, 50% off sale today, fellas. Improve your route running in 10 days video. It's a 45 minute long video with a specific step-by-step -step process. All the drills that you guys can do to improve your route running broken down into a complete schedule. Hope we get you guys on that soon. 50% off today only. Check out that very first link in the description. I'll see you guys next time.